it seems like you care. I just don't want to be sitting here talking like, right? Like no, like it's not live, and then yeah. us actually be live. I think that's the only reason I care more than anything. Because we always miss the start. Always. And we're live. Hey, hey, we're live. Hey. We sort of didn't miss it this time. No, we're good. Yeah. yeah. Insta definitely doesn't have this live yet. Hey, put your phone down. Sorry, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out if, if Insta has this as live yet. Anyway, hi guys, it's me, Tyler, Books and Brews underscore Ops Guy. This is Mudhog, B&Q. And we're joined today by our good friend Tom Schreiber, uh, who is, tell him your handle real quick, and then... Yeah, you can find me at Tom D. Shriver on Instagram, Twitter, etc. So, heh, your wife's watching. Hey, Lindsay. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so guys, we are here today. So Tom's joining us. As always, we're going to drink some beers. We'll talk about the beer. Uh, we're going to actually hear a little bit about what Tom likes to do and any of his hobbies. Um, you can find us now on Insta, YouTube, Twitch. There's one more in there. Um, Insta, YouTube, Twitch... Twitter, Periscope. Periscope. Um, we're, like, everywhere. John's been busy today. Um, but you can find us kind of on all those spots. Uh, if you've never watched, we'll do the beer thing. We'll chug some beers. We'll talk about random crap. We usually get off topic at least once. Twice, eight times. Yeah, but other than that, you know, it's going to be fun. And, you know, honestly, just the first official Two Bearded Guys live cast? It is the first official Two Bearded Guys live cast. We're no longer on our personal Instagrams. Uh, we're now doing it through our own Two Bearded Guys uh, handles. So yeah. that's that's exciting and a little nerve-wracking. I've been talking and nervous a little bit today. A little bit. Um, we should, you know what helps with that. Beer. We need beer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is also the first time I haven't shown up after having beer, so that's part of it. This is a little weird. Yeah, I'm sober. All right, y'all. Introduce the first one. All right, so Tom brought us uh, Central States Robur. It's R O B U R. Um, none of us are really true how to. Do you know how to say it? Uh, probably fancy, like Robur. You know? <laughs> See, that's why we brought it. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right. He gets all fancy, fancy but, but it's yeah. a uh, farmhouse pale ale uh, with French oak. Um, it was crafted here in Indiana. It's five percent, and of course, it's in a wonderful pint can because. Pint cans are the best way to can anymore, yeah, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, four packs, pints, it's the best way to buy craft beer, in my opinion. Um, but we will pour these. Yeah. John switched up our glasses switched today. Switched up some glasses. All right. So I found that. That's my Goodwill find. <laughs> Goodwill find. 50 cents. Hey. We needed this for when we drank Boulevard. Yeah. So my glass, it appears to be a Boulevard brewery glass. We have the Irvington Brewfest for Tom. And there's going to be need to more beer in these, but... And then and stuck in the middle. Yeah, stuck in the middle for Jonathan. Which, we, I guess we should have given that one to Tom. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. Stuck in the middle. we thought ahead. We absolutely missed a uh, fine opportunity there. <laughs> and I'm, like, not on screen at all right now, and I know that. Unless you're watching on YouTube, and then you can see me. Right. Yeah, they got the, you know, the yeah. billiard hat. <laughs> Our ghetto fabulous computer system that we have going on. Uh, we have a nice little tiny square that tells us where Instagram can see us. And then a big square where YouTube and everything else can see us. Uh, by the way, a little shout out. I see Beer Life Helen. I see, is that Beer Tico? And Little Miss Strange. And Hecubus underscore MA underscore Petite. So thanks for joining yes, us, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, that's really cool. I like having people join us. It's fun. And they're all on Instagram so far. Yeah. Shocker. That's where Shocker. we've done all our stuff. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So Farmhouse L. All right. John, you want to talk about it first? And we'll go from... So, yeah, I ha haven't tasted it yet. Farmhouse French L. Um, so I imagine it's going to be uh, like, like an American Pell L, except using probably some uh, French yeast would be my guess. Makes sense. A little bit of a sour smell. Not supposed to be sour. It's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I, I actually I do get a little bit of sour from it. I get a lot of bitter, um, but it's a it, there's definitely a sour to it. I don't know if that's why it's feeling bitter to me or not. Um, it's a dry, it's a dry beer. Dry mouthfeel. Yeah, yeah, definitely is a very dry mouthfeel. Um, I get more sour on the nose. Than yeah, when I'm definitely on the beer. nose. It's got a really pretty orange. Color to it. Not, I wouldn't describe it as an amber at all. Um, so Helen wants us to run her social media now because we're everywhere. 
We are uh, everywhere. We're everywhere. Nobody watches it, but we're everywhere. So, you know, <laughs> we're trying to force people, you know, put it in their face. Hey, Helen watches it. And she's awesome, too. She's, yeah. she's our biggest fan. Awesome, awesome. It is, a, it is hazy. It's not clear at all. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any real particulates in it, but it's definitely hazy beer. Hazy beer. Now, I'm not getting any sediment, really. Maybe a little, but it's mostly just hazy, dry mouthfeel, a yeah. little bitter on the tongue. Yeah. Um, it's good. I'm not a farmhouse guy, so I'm not going to bash it by any stretch of the imagination because it's not my style, and that's not really fair. And what was it, a 5 5%. 5%, 5%. 5%. 5% on the yeah. die. Do, do we know when that was canned? Probably not. My guess is it's probably a little bit older. That'd be my guess, too. So this is one, we have a local liquor store called Crown Liquors, and they did these $10 boxes. They got 24 craft beer cans for 10 bucks. Oh. But a lot of it was stuff they're trying to move off the shelf. Yeah. I need to go to that liquor store. Beers. We need to go to that liquor store. Yeah. We bought six boxes, at least. Lizzie can back me up if she's still watching. We bought, bought Oh, so you boxes, told her. But... Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she drinks crap beer as much as he does, yeah. so it's right. fine. All right, Maybe good. It, it's a good pairing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Lauren from Books and Brews is watching us. What's up, Lauren? Hey, Lauren. Um, but yeah, so that beer, it's good. If you like Farmhouse, I'm not... I mean, yeah. it's nothing special to me. Um... But I'm also really anticipating some beers we have at the end today, so I'm really like distracted by some of the beers we have. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing it, and uh, yeah, thank you. No problem, no problem. Good warm up beer. It is a good warm up beer. I'm happy. Do we need a palate cleanser? Oh, we're starting one already. I don't know. Do, yeah, do sure. Why not? All right. So for our palate cleanser. If you uh, are tuning in for the first time. Instead of like saltines or crackers or some something like that, like we'll normal use, people, <laughs> we'll use a really light beer. Um, it's been Keystone Light. It's been Cooks. Uh, today's Pal Cleanser is from Rad Brewing. Uh, just released in cans last week, I believe. Yep. Uh, the Naptown Fit. It's like a light cream ale. Uh, it's like 110 calories. Uh, so the one thing I will say, a uh, little love to Rad, uh, mostly because it's my job. Uh, but Naptown okay, Fitness is actually on this can. One of their athletes is. It's a little hard to see in the camera. Um, oh, yeah. But it's her. So it's pretty cool. Um, all the rad cans have somebody in association that's on the can and doing something cool and getting a little shout out. Uh, Naptown Fitness Instagram's even on there, so yeah, it's so pretty this is cool. Definitely a step up from Keystone. Oh, well, it's a big step up from the one we had last time, which <laughs> yeah. was Cooks. Yeah. Uh, somebody, I think Lauren's talking about your shirt, but my who shirt? I don't know. Such so needs a shirt. It's either your shirt or one of the two flannels. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I need a flannel. I don't have a flannel. Yeah, exactly. But obviously, I got the shirt shot. <laughs> Lizzie out. says she found the box. Oh, yeah. She, uh, did. Yeah. she did. All right. All right. Cheers, Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Still got you. That was... That was close, though. That was real close. Not with me. <laughs> <laughs> Dead last, man. <laughs> Tom's like, I'm hurt. That is much better than Cook's. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. Keystone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's nice to it's nice to be doing something else. <laughs> but right. anyway, what's our next beer, Jonathan? So, we have from Odd Side, Marie, a double passion fruit mango fruit sickle. So, I uh, sh probably should have looked this up beforehand. Uh, it is a 6.5%. With uh, it's mixed fermentation L, brewed with lactose, passion fruit, and mango added. So, by the way, John, at some point we got to answer Beer Life's last question. Do you still have those? Uh, so the last question was like something weird that we know. Oh yeah, the one we were avoiding. Yeah, I shouldn't have brought that we up. Did avoid that. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> anyway, so what's the next? Thing? <laughs> well, that's why we didn't answer. I, I guess I, I had mine. It's not super weird, but it's it's. I've done more keg stands in my thirties than I ever did in college. That's accurate. He has. He has. I've been around for at least one of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what was it that we know about each other or about ourselves? I don't know. Maybe she can clarify, but... Helen, if you remember what the exact question is, let me know so I can answer. Um, if not, I can probably look it up, but I'm trying to avoid looking at my phone this time. Um, I have a real bad habit of doing... like trying. I, I get to looking up beers, and then I go down the rabbit hole a little bit. Yeah, well, usually you log them on untapped or yeah, you know, whatever, yeah. so you gotta... Yeah, Yeah, because I'm so used to doing I it right that. away that like, immediately I go to my phone. But Tom's also a big untapped guy. Um, 
I actually follow his untapped because I found out you can follow people and see what they're drinking. Yeah. So I creep on Tom. Every time he checks in, I get a notification. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom does has his own podcast, right? Yeah, so myself, my wife Lizzie, and our buddy Dave, uh, with his wife Sarah, she kind of is behind the scenes for us doing the computer stuff, but we have a podcast called The Drinking Meeples. Uh, our, our little motto is we brew a love for board games. So... Started off with a lot more beer talk than we have now. Okay. Basic, we, we get together, we, we chat for 10 minutes, we have a discussion that's board game adjacent, and then we finish with like a little kind of on-air game, sort of NPR style, if you do wait, wait, don't tell me, anything like that. But 30-minute listen, we're drinking a beer the whole time, we'll let you know what we're drinking. Um, don't offer too many notes, we just say, oh, it's good, or it's not, you know, that's, that's kind of it, but okay. we, have, we have a blast doing it, we have a blast. And, and one more time, what was the Instagram handle? Uh, so it's The Drinking Meeples. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook you, under The Drinking Meeples and Twitter at Drinking Meeples. Shoot us emails at thedrinkingmeeples at gmail.com. Support our Patreon, whatever you want to do. Awesome. <laughs> I don't love it. Here. I love it. Uh, uh, real cool people. Uh, I got to know them a couple years ago uh, for an event I was hosting at Books and Brews Broad Ripple. Yeah. Um, we were hosting an event for a game developer and uh, Inside Up Games. Uh, shout out a little bit but i got they came and we're hanging out and i got to meet them and we've become friends and yeah it's been pretty cool it's a Is, they're cool people yeah, that, was that the time times. that uh i was introduced to Gor- goris max so was that day yep. oh yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's a good game i, I went about that we drank a lot of beer with canadians that night <laughs> that was fun too we drank a lot Man, of we beer with their ass. That night. we did we had, we we had, had a press meeting that night we were having too much fun <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not driving back to indy right now we're <laughs> staying here all right so okay. on to what was the beer again handed to me I like seeing yeah. it. Yeah, and we can put it up. Yep. It's uh, so it's Odd Side. Uh, ooh, that light's killing it. Uh, but it's a double passion fruit mango fruit sickle. This is the fruitiest beer day I think we've ever had because we have one more so. Berliner. One more Berliner. Yeah, we needed to mix it up. Ooh, we should do seltzers for a palate cleanser sometime. Should or do a seltzer episode? We, they got the we could do a seltzer, seltzer episode, now, right? They do have Bud Light seltzer. Have you tried time. those? Not yet. No. No. We, we'll do a seltzer episode. Oh, uh, I'm gonna make sure I have gin on hand for that though. Maybe we should do. Maybe we should do a uh, palate cleanser of barrel aged beers. For <laughs> <laughs> we gotta All chug right. those. All right. Cool. Oh. All right. So I will start off this one. Um, the nose. I mean, it's a fruit beer, so you're getting a lot of that mango. Especially the mango. Mango always seems yeah, to be a dominant flavor. It's definitely dominant. Um, it's I a dominant smell. It it's a dominant smell, dominant flavor in anything it's in. Um, so it's really, basically, to me, if you buy, like, a mango juice from the store, like that mango orange juice, you know, anything that has that, it, it basically tastes like that. It's the alcoholic version of that to me right now. It's just a juicy, easy-drinking, fruited beer. Yeah, it sort of tastes like, so it says fruitsicle, right? And it's got the popsicle pictures on the can. Yeah. It's almost like if you had a light beer, dunk a popsicle in, let it melt, and then are drinking it. Like, it's, you know what I mean? It kind of reminds me of something like that. That, that actually is a pretty good description. Yeah, it's, it's very soft, mouthfeel. Um, like I said, the mango's real strong. Very, very fruity in just the, the way it even drinks. Kind of viscous, if you will. Kind of, kind of leaves that slick feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it definitely gives it a little bubbly on the tongue. That's why I compared it to orange juice. Mine's doing it's like a cold, like frothy kind of orange juice a little bit. I get a little bubbly on the tongue. I really do. I, that would be good in a mimosa. That would be very good yeah. in a mimosa. Yeah. Yeah. You're not lying. Ooh. A little bit off top. Do we have what? a champagne? No. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Uh, we just got back from Vegas tonight, today, a couple hours yeah. ago. <laughs> but they have this drink there. And you, like, chew this flower first, and then it gives you an allergic reaction in your mouth. And then the mezcal, I guess, and the actual cocktail, like, kind of clears it out. Most interesting drink I've had. You said, like, the fuzzies on the top, yeah. so I was thinking about it. Huh. It just makes it feel like your mouth is kind of swelling up. And So if you're in Vegas, go to the chandelier bar and ask for the flower drink. Flower drink. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, now I want to go just to be the big bearded dude in a flannel, so Tom, um, and be like, with the flower drink. <laughs> Yeah, man. No Just same. because I want to now eat something that gives me an allergic reaction on purpose. I know. I've never done it. Interesting. Seems odd. I'm a little worried about you. Hey, 
It's a good time. <laughs> I mean, I'll try anything once. My brother did it with us, too. Was, of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's tasty. It's not bad. I enjoy it. All right, and Beer Life Helen told us it's supposed to be about each other, not your... Oh. Yeah, so it sort of worked. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of a weird one because just it's a... I don't know. The weirdest thing I think I know about John that we've done together or anything like that, especially in the beer world, is uh, it's not every day. I'll just put it this way. It's not every day you pull over on 465, uh, which mm. is one of our busier roads in the Indianapolis area. Um, for someone to go uh, hands and knees and puke a little bit. Um, by a little bit, I mean a lot. And then get back in the truck and puke out my window. Um, so I guess that would be the... It's all tied together. Yeah, I guess that'd be all the weirdest one. Yeah. Um, I remember the time you almost moved to China. I did almost move to China. You almost moved to China? I almost moved to China. I was supposed to go ah. coach baseball. Uh, and yeah. then I decided not to for some personal things. and I should have went to China. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, no, I almost went to coach baseball in China. That would have been hilarious. Because I would have been talking about a guy a fish out of water. And it, ooh, that would have been weird. Yeah. Yeah. Ch I've never had a Chinese beer. I've had Japanese. Yeah, yeah. I've had Japanese. I've had Korean. I've had Lebanese. Yeah. I have I never had Chinese. Chinese beer either. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Might not <laughs> see if there's any anywhere. The more you know. <laughs> right? Probably right. a palate cleanser. <laughs> Most likely. I can't imagine them like brewing beer to get people drunk. Yeah. Alright, what's next, Jonathan? So we have from Bad Dad Brewing, up in Fairmount, I believe. <laughs> Helen says at least you didn't puke in my car. Yeah, that's true. No, just on it. Just, just uh, and the car behind him, but whatever. <laughs> um, this is the Ask Your Mother. So Bad Dad Brewing does all these dad joke beers uh, with their with their names of, the, of it and uh, yeah so this is Ask Your Mother yeah because they have like what the socks and sandals yeah you know at, you know the classic where the dad says to ask your mother and and this one is a Berliner style it's it's uh, so Berliner Weiss with uh, raspberry uh, posted it yesterday and funny story bad dad reached out and you know, thank us for, for featuring them and let us know that it was the very first time they brewed this style so they're going to brew it again they said um, it, it didn't turn out exactly the way they wanted it, but it's still really good, and I'm excited to try it. Um, we're going to open it on screen. They said be a little bit careful with it because it might be a little overcarbonated. Oh, it sounds all right. Nice. Yeah. Oh, there it there is. There it is. <laughs> not bad, though. That's no, not, it's better than I expected. I expected worse, yeah. So, I did, too. I'm a little disappointed now. <laughs> I was so, ready for the foul. I was waiting for the computer to be in trouble. <laughs> there are several reasons that, you know, a, a can of beer might explode. I think oftentimes we get familiar with, like, the real fruited beers who has a lot of the fruit in the can and the yeast and it continues to ferment. That's bad. That's why, you know, a lot of the, the, the smoothie-style beers, you have to keep super cold because that'll keep the yeast dormant. And drink right away. Drink right away. Um, also, if a can is just overfilled in general you know as it sits on a warm grocery shelf if there's no headspace as the carbon dioxide is released um it'll explode mm -hmm. so i've seen that personally uh both ways there so yeah beer 101 beer 101 that's always scary you're listening to us tell you about beer by the way i hope we know a little bit we know a little bit no actually i just like to be self-deprecating it's kind of nice when <laughs> it's it's nice. We both have worked in the industry long enough now that we know a little bit about a lot, but not necessarily a lot about something specific. Although John's getting a little more specific doing his Cellarman stuff now. Yeah, so it, I just like Sun King is a, is a culture of growth and development, and that's all important to me. Ooh. There you go. I like that. It's almost like champagne -y. Nice big, Nice big head on it. Yeah, kind of strawberry color. Ooh. Like a light strawberry yeah. color. I like the smell. Definitely hazy. What all was in the Berliner? What fruit did Raspberry. It Just raspberry? Yeah. Ooh, this will be fun because we've always done at Books and Brews a raspberry, so. Sweet, tart, and a little fruity. Everything the talk should be. Ha, <laughs> ha, I get it. Yeah. Dad jokes for the win. Ask your mother. <laughs> I've had a lot of bad dad and I never connected 
the names of their beers to the fact that they're like bad dad sayings. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bad dad sayings are things they do, like socks with sandals. I, I feel like, like a moron now, like, obviously. <laughs> What's, they have an IPA that's super solid. What is that? Uh, uh, I see it around a lot. The Tapestry of Obscenity. Yeah, that yeah. one's a good one. Yeah. I do enjoy that one. Ooh, that's bubbly. They weren't kidding. Nice and tart. Yeah. I don't mind the bubbles. No, I like though. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a, it's definitely a little more carb than a lot of times, so it's going to give you a little more champagne-y kind of feel. But the bubbles and then that real tart. Damn, man. It's a tart raspberry Berliner. I mean, it's it's everything they said it was. But the bubbles almost give it such a light feel that you don't get over sour. So if you're not a huge sour fan or tart fan, it's not going to punch you. But it definitely has enough that if you like the sour, like Don's a big tart beer yeah. fan. It, it's not like cheek puckering tart. I've definitely had some that are. It's a little tongue uh-huh. drying. A little bit tongue drying. Yeah. So not not the full effect, but I wonder. And they he kept. It was Patrick from Bad Dad. He kept mentioning how um, it's going to be a little bit more like champagne, a little more bubbly. I wonder if they use champagne yeast. No, because they said it wasn't on purpose. Okay. Just over carbed. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, so again, uh, I know you're watching us on Instagram, so I don't have to tell you to follow us on Instagram, Um, but we do have the YouTube channel now, which we are hoping to start putting out some short content, even if we're not together, maybe one of us like trying a beer, or if we're out at, we'll we'll use YouTube a lot for when we're out and about, so when we go to beer fests or releases, stuff like that, we'll definitely use YouTube a lot for that. And YouTube will be good, because I'll be able to, these will be saved. And I'll be able to actually post this and have it stay on YouTube. Yeah. So that'll be nice. We'll shorten up the videos into like just the review parts. Uh, we're going to use YouTube for that. So go ahead and follow that channel. Uh, everything we do, we were very fortunate. We're able to do under the two bearded guys' name. Uh, we didn't have to change anything for any yeah. Twitter, awesome. Twitch, anything. Yeah. Two bearded guys. Uh, we're the only ones using it. And again, bearded is spelled as a beer, not beard. Um, but yeah, so we were real fortunate though that everything we wanted was yeah open and available. You had that website yet? Uh, we haven't. Not quite Ooh, yet. That's John, come on, you better get yet. on that. Hey, if you're watching, buy it now. <laughs> we sell it to these idiots. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> two. We'll each pitch in a dollar. All right. All right. <laughs> Make Tom buy it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. After that comment. So, <laughs> the drinking meeples. Yeah. Uh, favorite game. My favorite game is Orleans. Uh, Tasty Minstrel Games. It's like a bag builder. So you get little workers that you're going to place out on your own personal board. Okay. But you're adding them to a bag, right? So I might have 15 workers in my bag, but I can only draw seven this turn. So I see what I get, and then I place how I can. That allows me to do things on the like cooperative board in the middle, or I can do, uh, do things to upgrade my own player board, get new workers, things like that. So it's, it's a really fun... Uh, Kind of engine building, worker placement feel. Okay. But I've played it I don't know how many times, and it's still it's still a great time. What about you, John? You're a big board game guy, too. Yeah, dude. So there's a lot of board games that I like, and I was I was talking earlier, Settlers of Catan is probably, like, the perfect game. Um, it's, it's strategic. It's super easy to get into. Um, so not a steep learning curve. But yet it's it's surprisingly a little bit deeper than, than maybe a, another game, than, than other games like a Ticket to Ride. Uh, Ticket to Ride I get bored with real quick. Um, with that being said, it's probably not my favorite, but I play it all the time. Somebody just joined us on Twitch. Sorry, nice. I got a little excited hey. about that. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, on top of that, though, I've been playing a lot of the new, from Fantasy Flight Games, Marvel Champions. Mm. It's oh, fun. Yeah. I played with you that day. Yeah. Um, it's like, a, it's a weird combination. If you played Marvel Legendary or any of the le- Legendary games, um, and Magic the Gathering. So, you, you... Build your deck. You actually have your pre-built deck. You play your your cards with your resources. You exhaust your cards to do their actions. Um, but you have a villain, like a live board game, that the the villain you're just cooperatively trying to defeat the villain. Uh, Hecubus, absolutely, we do. Uh, DM us and we can talk about it. What's the question? Uh, do we accept beer donations for reviews? Yeah. But yeah, DM us and we'll talk about it. So absolutely. So. Uh, Marvel Champions is what I've been playing lately, and uh, finally won our first match. It's taken us, I guess, the more players that you have, the harder it is, and we've noticed that. So We won. It wouldn't have been your first Just match. like the two of us, though. Yeah. Yeah. But we won the two of us. The two of us did. So we can't say it was his first time when he right. did it recently. Right. 
<laughs> that hurts my feelings. Tyler, your turn. Uh, my favorite game. Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, so I've played some games with them before. Uh, my buddy Jared, who's actually going to be on the show in March, oh perfect, um, is uh, another big board gamer. Um, plus, does video reviews and all sorts of cool stuff. But so I play a ton with them, and their board game library is now between him and his girlfriend is well over a hundred. Um, I want to say though, my favorite is probably Clank. Okay. Um, in, in any version, um, Clank is a blast. Uh, it's a little bit of deck building. You're moving around the, uh, trying to collect stuff. Uh, you got to get down, get enough of the treasure, get back up, try not to die. Um, you can kind of mess with your like uh, opponents a little bit. Um, and his girlfriend and I have a real rivalry every time we play, and we try to mess with each other in every game possible. So it's fun because there's enough of that. Um, I like it, and then I also really like uh, King of Tokyo. Um, yeah. It's a little simpler, um, but with the expansions, there's a lot that can be added to it. Uh, and it's a straight up, you're battling it out for who survives the longest, basically, because if yeah. you're the last man standing, you win. If you get to the most amount of points first, you win. And it's definitely one where you can directly affect the outcomes of your opponents, and it's, it, and it's a little it bit of risk-reward. Like you stay in to earn points, but you can get hammered. It takes like 10 or 15 minutes. It's a super quick yeah. play. I think the fat, longest game of King of Tokyo I've ever played was like 25 minutes. Yeah. And that was a slow game. Like, I think we got talking and drinking beer. Well, King of Tokyo is a good drinking game. It absolutely is. So if you want like an easy teach, people mm -hmm. who don't play a lot, you just want to drink some beer. Yeah. All right. So, we, three down. We've got Power Cleanser time? Yeah, that's not for Power right. Cleanser. I don't think I can go from that to the next one. Yeah. All right. I think... I think that would, uh, going from a Berliner Weiss to, uh, what, a barrel-aged beer? Yeah, 13% that, Imperial. That just sounds like yeah. a bad idea without cleansing mm. the palate. Yeah. And anyone watching knows that I am bad at chugging beer. Beer bongs, man, I can I can knock those out, but when it comes to chugging... I haven't done a beer bong in... Year. Every Indy shot. 500. <laughs> yeah. Shot, I, see, I shotgun when I'm at the 500. I do okay. shotgun. Yeah. I shotgun. That's not a bad idea, John, to rinse the glass a little bit. Yeah, rinse the glass. Oh, yeah, we're classy up in here. Yeah. Yes. I'm learning. Learning from the pros. <laughs> well, Dish Bish would normally be off screen, which you don't have today. <laughs> Matt so. needs to come back. He does need to come back. That's Hashtag off screen Matt. Uh. Matt, come, come, come wash your dishes, please. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and contribute. Yeah, and drink beer and contribute. And drink beer. Yeah. Well, the problem is if we have Matt here, too, it's just more beer we have to have. Oh, darn. I was going to say, that's a, good, that's a good gig, though. <laughs> Somebody comes, they get to drink beer, and they just have to clean your glasses. That's easy. Yeah. He and randomly speaks yeah. every once in a while. Yeah, that's good <laughs> stuff. When we let him. All right. All right. Cheers. 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 We're calling draw. <laughs> oh, draw. Draw. Yep. Three-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm literally the worst and forgot to follow you guys on my main account. It's Tab, yo. Hey, Tabby, hey. what's up? Uh, wrong time on my Google, Google Calendar. <laughs> it, Tabby's one of our biggest fans and oh, someone awesome. we actually know personally. Yeah. But it's really funny because she usually will like put it on her Google Calendar or she did a countdown one time on her Instagram page. Yeah. Like, awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know what time it is? Oh, yeah. Yay. Again, our wonderful bottle opener spatula. You know, the other part of my B... Hey, Mudog what's up, B Electrical Longboard on Twitch? Mudog B in Q. That stands for barbecue. I barbecue a lot. So, if you're going to follow me, you're going to see lots of beer postings. You're also going to see lots of barbecue. Next up, I just made the dough tonight. I'm making pizzas on the smoker Wednesday. Ooh, so guess so, who's coming over for dinner Wednesday? There's going to be... Oh, and it's game night, too. <laughs> yeah, so... That's awesome. That's my favorite thing, though, is John every once in a while will be like, hey, I actually, technically I have a standing invite on Sundays, Yeah. but Sundays are a day that's harder for me to get over here, but it, every once in a while I come over, like Thanksgiving, he smoked a turkey for uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always make too much food. Yeah, So if you're in the area and you see me start posting pictures of uh, me making something on the grill, you should just stop by. <laughs> I know where the place is now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Watch out, John. Reach up. Grab the address. Tell him. I just invited like three people to my house. Yeah. Uh, four. Four. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, for this next one, this is from uh, Prairie Artisan Elves. 
We did uh, in another In collaboration, beer. actually. Oh, in collaboration with Evil Twin Brewing. Ooh, two names I like. We yeah. did the uh, Christmas L a mm -hmm. few episodes back. So this one is the Imperial Stout aged on coffee, vanilla, chilies, and cocoa nibs. So it's called Bible Belt Even More. It's their Even More Bible Belt. Even I More Bible Belt. Okay. Today. From Oklahoma with love. So. Oh, Oklahoma yeah. loves us. We love you too, Oklahoma. That sounds great. I don't think I've yet to have a Prairie Artisan beer that I haven't enjoyed. Well, uh, I am excited. There's another one that we have on tap. That is the Oreo one. On deck. On deck. I wish we had it on tap. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be <laughs> we would be very drunk by now. So uh, that'll be coming up in a, in a future episode. But not tonight while I'm Not there. tonight. I'm sorry. Yeah, we <laughs> wanted this one. Whatever. So I'm this one. So... <laughs> <laughs> Just because I don't mean, like that well. <laughs> we could pull it out. Nothing says so we can't. <laughs> we, we still have a half hour before we're normally done, so we're actually ahead of the game right now. We are. Uh, you you want to show it up there? It's what happens when you don't get as off topic as normal. Um, so, yeah, Prairie Artisans, even more Bible Belt. Sorry, the camera's a little far away. Um, we're still working on actually upgrading and making this somewhat professional. Um, eventually we'll get there, but we're still. On it. Uh, nice. I'm excited. I'm actually going to let Tom talk about this one first because we haven't let him do one yet. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited. Yeah. If you didn't hear him, coffee, vanilla, uh, chilies, and cocoa nibs. That is, that's an imperial stout worth drinking right there. It's yeah, 13%. It, 13 mm -hmm. So as you know, we always do our best to get drunk while while, while doing this. We normally start with these. Yeah, we do. Uh, we're, again, really? trying to be professional. Huh. Oh, yeah, we almost always start with the heavy hitters. <laughs> Which is usually it's, a bad idea. It's, it's not because we're super excited for it, and we just don't want to wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, we we, we did wait for the barley wine last time, though. We did. And that was that was good. That was real good. Oh. All right. So, as we get ready to taste this and, and talk about it, um, next week we have my buddy Cam coming on as guest. And there is a second guest for that show. And Jake Munt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Cameron... Yes. Is a longtime buddy of mine. We go to the 500, Indy 500 every year. Uh, we play Axes and Allies a lot together. Um, he also does the iRacing on, online, so just the, the e racing basically. He has a, a, competitive, a competitive league that he's in, and um, he's featured books and brews on his uh, car livery before, and he's now got my face on his car. Kind of weird. <laughs> What's up, James Humphreys? And then Jake, you want to talk, talk about Jake? So Jake Munns is actually uh, my head brew legger at the Books and Brews Mothership, the original B&B, &B, um, off 96th Street by the Home Depot for the Indianapolis area. Um, but he's our head brew legger, and he's also a great musician. That's actually the main reason that we're bringing him on, is we want to talk about his music, some of his influences a little bit. He actually just had a show Saturday, and it was a lot of fun. So, nice. Um, it's going to be fun having him on because it'll be our first musician, not our last. We do have another one on deck, but we're excited. Uh, some of our guests coming up have very varying interests, um, so it's going to be a good time. We have more after that. We're still booking them. So. Are we going to ask Jake to bring his acoustic? No, we're not. We're going to oh. make Jake bring his acoustic. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Like, oh, man. There it is. I've learned a long time ago, don't ask Jake to do things. Just, just tell him just to do things. Just tell him to do things. Yeah. All right, so the beer. Tom, yeah. once you're ready... Feel free to smell, drink. Get that chili on the nose for sure. And the cocoa oh. nibs. It really sticks on the tongue. That's solid. It's, it's very smooth. Um, it's an easy drinker. I feel like sometimes you get those 13 percenters that you know feel like you're drinking bourbon or whatever. And those are typically bourbon barrel aged, I guess. <laughs> but, but like th this one's really smooth. I mean, it's... It's like a like an alcoholic upgrade the chocolate milk with some chili powder. Yeah, the cocoa's real strong in this one. Definitely a lot of cocoa. The chili's what I smelled. Tom was on top of that there. Um, you get a lot of the cocoa too. Uh, the two main things I'm getting on the smell are definitely the cocoa and the chili. But the the cocoa nibs, man, I'm, it coats your tongue. Yeah. But it, and not in a bad way. It's that you get that flavor. You get that relaxed, and it's easy. It goes down with no burn. If I didn't know it, I wouldn't believe it's thirteen percent. Yeah, it, no way, yeah. no way. Do I um, say this is a thirteen percent? I think it at a seven and a half, eight. Honestly, we were joking about like, like chugging a barrel age or something like that. If we ever did like a seltzer episode, 
and this is one, it wouldn't be great to chug, obviously, but I think it would be actually doable. It would be doable. And not just because it's a easy drinking 13%. Sure. I want to use this in chili. Ooh. That's what I want to do. I want to use this in chili. I do a chili cook. Oh, the chubby meeple's watching. Hey. Mark. <laughs> Mark Mark's, Mark's here to talk about our, or listen to us talk about mouthfeel. That's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Mark, you already missed the bad dad beer, man. He's got the worst dad jokes of anyone I know. <laughs> uh, that, that makes sense with Mark. Mm-hmm. Mark uh, is another board game guy. Uh, he runs the Chubby Meeple. Um, he is the Chubby Meeple. Uh, great dude. Uh, uh, and then what bo- or what game store is it? Uh, he's with Moonshot Thank Games. Thank you. And Chubby Meeple oh, is... Oh, just here in town. Yeah, yeah. Chubby Meeple is affiliated with the Dice Tower. Yeah. So okay. he does work for them, too. Yep. Nice. So it's awesome. He's a good dude. Follow him. He's an okay dude. I like him. I wouldn't follow him. <laughs> you do follow him. <laughs> I'm just I do. All right, so Tyler, what game got you into tabletop gaming? Not Monopoly, Risk, you know. Yeah. Um, real quick though, Risk is one of the best games of all time. Um, huh. I grew up playing that game. I love it. Back off. Uh, my I friends, you could see me shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> my friends and I still play Risk, but um, that's fun. That's fun. Uh, honestly, it's probably Puerto Rico. Um, I think if I remember right, because I played a bunch of the like family games stuff like that growing up, and I probably played some more difficult games. But I'd gotten out of, I'd gotten away from board games completely for a long time, uh, and I was at the brewery one day, and uh, I think it, it was the head brewer Brian Suter. At the time, head brewer Brian Sewer. I think John was there. I think, I think Chris, it was Kyle. It was when Kyle was yeah. working for us the first time. Kyle loves that game. Or now head brewer. I think Kyle was working for us the first time then. And they go, Tyler, 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 come play with us. And I'm like, man, I'm getting ready to get out of here. How long is it going to take? They're like, a while. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. all right. That means I drink longer. So I sat down, had some more beers, and played Puerto Rico. And it is a big boy game. It is very in-depth, a lot going on, but being very easy to learn. Um, yeah. I think that's why I like it, because it's actually pretty easy to learn, pretty upfront, but definitely a lot to think about. And you have to think a lot of steps at a time sometimes, uh, but it was, I enjoy it, and it's actually the game I'm always disappointed when we have game night that we're playing something else, because uh, I'm always like, we can we play Puerto Rico. We, we. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no. But Puerto Rico's a nice strategy game. It's a good game. I, I, I like you it. You got little workers, you got you to yep. manage, and there's resources. I, I enjoy it. San that Juan's game. a good Light version of it. It is. It's not as much fun. It's not as much fun. Sure. Tom? I think my uh, my entry into the hobby was Settlers of Catan that we were talking about earlier. Yep. Um, but what really like re-solidified it was Terra Mystica, which is a big, crunchy board game, too. But that was one that, like, the rule book is, I mean, 30 pages. It's it's a big, long one. And then, but you learn it. And it's, it's like you're saying. It's, it's simple. Like, it, it's seven steps, and you just have a lot of cool decisions that are pretty complex that you get to make, but it's really not that hard of a game. It's just you get a lot of agency over your decisions, so uh, it's kind of fun. Real quick, yeah. Uh, Hecubus says, Risk is life, so he's my new favorite person watching. Uh, James <laughs> Humphreys wants to know if we've ever played, if anybody's played Gloomhaven. I, I, I played a couple episodes of, Go- of Gloomhaven. Good, because I have not, so. And James, he reached out to me. Um, I actually used to work with him at uh, Schwab, Charles Schwab. I'm sorry, James. And uh, he was to come on and be, like be our food correspondent. Oh, all right. I like so, that. Yeah. Uh, yes, Beer Life Holland. There is a game called Puerto Rico, and it's a blast. It's an older game. It's not made anymore, is it? It's not in publication I think, anymore. I think you can buy it. Is it? I didn't, I didn't yeah. think it was. I, th- I think that's one of their evergreen titles. Oh, so uh, okay. I, I would imagine yeah. there's It is then, game. yeah. But, yes, there is a game called Puerto Rico. It's a lot of fun. Um, and the Chubby Meeple... Says it's okay to be wrong about risk, Tyler. Uh, Mark, oh, up yours. Thank you, uh, Mark. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we still got a little bit of time. We got another so, beer yet. And and so my first like yeah. non-family night board game was probably Settlers of Catan. Um, really loved it. But the game that like got me into gaming and got me spending a ton of freaking money. <laughs> <laughs> It's literally like, okay. Yeah, that's um, what I thought he was going to say. Yeah, X Wing Miniatures. Yeah, that's the Death Star there. It's kind of hard to see. Um, He's knocking everything so over. So much money on X uh, X Wing Miniatures. 
Um, big Star Wars guy. I I love the ships. I it just captured my imagination. It was one of those love hate relationships, though. Like I'd be super into it for like six months, and then I'd be like, oh, I'm done with this game, and then I'd be right back into it again. Because then they make second edition and make you buy. We actually, oh, yeah. Yeah. well, we actually had a group that got together every week and played. There was a campaign that was out, and yeah. we actually got together and played the campaign. And like you could upgrade your ships throughout. You started with a like basic an RPG, ship. RPG style, yeah, and upgrade the ships, and it was an absolute blast. Yeah, um, I still will never forgive John for selling his X Wing things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So X Wing miniatures was what really got me into it. Then I got in, just got into some a bunch of other games. Started going to like, um, of course, we're in Indianapolis, so Gen Con, uh, the annual annual gaming convention, biggest gaming convention. It's like their industry. Um, the, the big industry convention for the game, the tabletop gaming. But another great one, if I, you you've probably been, um, it's is a Who's Your Con. Yeah. So Who's Your Gamers is just a free um, group that supports tabletop gaming in the area. And every March they have their Who's Your Con, and it's a free gaming convention yeah. at the. Um, Wyndham Hotel? Yeah, it's at the Wyndham. They're at the Wyndham. IndyCon is another local one that's at the Drury. Okay. So we got we got two good ones kind of back to back around that March time. Just a great time. Yeah. Uh, Beer Life, yes. Puerto Rico is a board game. Yes. She's, uh, she's asked like three questions about Puerto Rico, so I was like, <laughs> You should play it. It's fun. If you like strategy, if you if you're strategic at all, uh, you gotta place your workers and get resources, uh, build buildings. If you like that sort of stuff, you should get it. That's the one where you have to feed them too, right? Or they like starve and die? No, you do not have to feed them. Which one am I thinking? Agricola. Yeah, oh, Agricola. Agricola. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That and Caverna. The, we the absolutely need to play Agricola then because uh, we have a couple friends, aka Chris Fallon, that would definitely let him die. Well, we have <laughs> Caverna, uh, which is a sister game. Oh, we do? Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right, we need. Right over there? Yeah. Like, of course, like. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple things. You guys can continue to talk. After that, that beer, like my glass is coated, yeah. so I'm going to do a quick rinse on some glasses, and then we'll chug and then, we'll and then chug we'll drink. In. What's now. the hashtag for the person who washes the glasses? <laughs> Dish bitch. Ah, yeah. that's right, that's right. <laughs> Tom absolutely knew that. He just wanted to make John say it. <laughs> yep, that's me. How did I not know about this? We uh, beer met. life, I'm not sure, um, but it is. It's an it's an older game. Uh, Puerto Rico's been around a while, but it's definitely a lot of fun. Uh, check it out. I don't have anything else to really say about it, but it's yeah, it's it's kind of a staple. Fun. Yeah, it's been around a while. It's a little bit of pushback because like the colonization and stuff, and it's not not up everybody's alley. Heaven it's forbid colonize theme. things. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So no, you're, he's absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, but what what have you been playing lately? So lately, we've been doing a lot of this game called Wavelength. And Llama. So those are the two. You and Llama. Dude, Llama's good. <laughs> llama is, it fits in a box about yay big. You take it to a bar. It's really, really easy to learn. It's a simple card game. Everyone puts down a card or you take a card. That's the entire game. Uh, wavelength is a party game where you try to get on the same wavelength with other people. So you get a clue between, I don't know, something hot on the left side, something cold on the right, and maybe I, my... Clue's supposed to be right in the middle, so I need to think of something that's warm, right? Not hot or cold, and my team has to guess exactly where to put the dial. I'm sure it would make a little bit more sense when I'm sober explaining the <laughs> game, but um, yeah, this is a really fun party game. Cool guessing. All right, yeah. so we got one more chug left in us, we, um, and, we, and then we have one more beer. Oh, 16 ounces. Yeah. God um, damn it. Uh, we're down to about 15 minutes tonight, so we're going to... At least make sure we get these down and get to our next beer, and then we'll... Is, it, is there anything we want or need to announce kind of for our next episode or anything cool coming up soon? Uh, coming up soon, uh, we do have a beer giveaway slash board game giveaway. Um, so our buddy Tom here, him and his wife, are amazing people and donated a couple games for us uh, to include in our next beer giveaway. So we have Coup uh, Reformation. This is an easy-to-learn Easy to drink while playing game. Yeah, great party game. Um, it's a great party game. And again, Among Thieves is another game that's set up to be able to play a little more in a party style, which is one of the reasons it's a beer giveaway. So Tom and Lizzie thought, yeah. well, if we're going to give games for a beer giveaway, 
we might as well make them games that can be played. Drinking games. And when are we doing that, Tyler? I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, you're going to make me officially announce it. Is this going to be... Uh, so it'll go live on February 1st. Um, I, wa- I thought about moving it up because that's what John was hoping I'd say. But we're going to go February 1st. Okay. Um, that make sure I have time to get the beer together and make sure I have everything I want. Um, but we'll announce it on February 1st on... You'll have to sign up through the Two Bearded Guys Instagram. But we'll also link it to John and I's personal as well to spread the wealth and to get the knowledge out. And we may as well, for like anybody who donates anything, like we, so they should also like the Drinking Meeples. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll make it all up as we go. Follow Drinking Meeples. <laughs> it's our first guess. We could make it up as we go, right? right. Uh, just don't hold us to it every other time. Uh, but follow the Drinking Meeples, um, and we may or may not make that a, like, important thing in the giveaway. We'll see. Um it more decides if I remember to type it in than anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, so cheers, y'all. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I'm getting God, some man. water on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> the the mountain mouth feel. The mountains yeah. are not blue. They've been sitting out a while. Okay. All right. All right. Oh God. <laughs> all right. Warm. Oh, it was exactly cold when I bought it. Oh. It's not bad. <laughs> all right. Cheers, gents. <laughs> I'm just gonna chug this one. It's fine. I'll just I'll just continue to drink. It's fine. <laughs> Can't do it. I was almost done, and then I started laughing at him. Woo! Uh, I got about half. Oh. It's whatever. It's course Man. light. I did not go. I was out in Denver in June. I did not go to the course. In fact, really? I, I, I really thought about it. We just couldn't fit it in. I've been to Anheuser. Uh, in St. Louis, it's fun. You get real drunk for the. There's a free one for the Budweiser facility. A free tour and a ten dollar tour. Do the ten dollar tour. Free tour, you get like one sample during the thing and like two beer tokens at the end. The ten dollar one, you literally go into a room for twenty minutes, drink for twenty minutes. They have a fridge just full of shit. Drink for twenty minutes, then you go on the tour and the whole there's like six stops in the tour where you drink. And then at like the it. end you go back to that room and drink for twenty more minutes. I like it. Yeah, it was but the free one, you get two beer tokens? Yeah, that's it. But that's two full beers. Like two pints? For yeah. free. Yeah. That's a good deal, man. Well, yeah, but the $10 one, you're drinking like 10 pints. That, uh, that's, a, that's a better deal. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, well, okay, let's talk math here for a second. $10, 10 pints, dollar pint, free, two pints, zero pint. Well, you can drink more. Depends on how fast you want to drink. <laughs> Mathematically speaking, the free one with free beer... Is the better deal. Yeah, but then you're paying full price for pints later. Therefore, and if you're going to have some, I get it. But to get to that level of drunk, you have to pay for more. I'm, I'm being that picky. That's what I do. Um, so this is Toppling Goliath, which I love, by the way. Uh, Twisted Galaxy. It's their double IPA. So, um, Toppling go Goliath. Pseudo Sue is by far the probably the, the one you'll see the most. King Sue has become very popular. They now have a lager that's... New World Dorothy. Yeah, I have not had yet, but I've so seen it right. in like six liquor stores. Um, but I have not seen this before. Suter's watching and so is Chris Reen. What's up, guys? Hey, hey, what's up? Chris was supposed to be here tonight. He must have forgot. I'm cool with that. I'm he was going to be dish bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yeah, we got our Toppling Goliath beer here. Brian, when are you coming on? I'm going to put him on the spot right now. He'll never... He'll right now, me. Brian. When are you coming on? Never. It's Suter. Oh, so, as you're pouring... I wanted to make sure he got all the head. <laughs> no complaints so, here. <laughs> I was over at Suter's Old House uh, the other day. Suter was there, hung out with Suter on Saturday. Suter is Books and Brews Old Head Brewer. Old Head Brewer. Okay. And uh, we watched the uh, MMA fight. All 40 seconds of it? All 40 seconds of it. It was fun. <laughs> it was quick. <laughs> it was. Oh, so, I had so many sex UFC. jokes. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. But we, we actually, we did watch the early prelims and the oh, prelims yeah. and the entire main card. So, okay. so you got your money's worth. We did. We got our view. money's worth. Oh, I was invited to that. I didn't show up. Yeah. Oh, forgot about that. That's all. It's fun. There was like 40 people there. That didn't surprise me. It was a big event. Oh, I'm glad I wasn't there. Yeah. I don't like crowds that well. But I thought Cowboy Cerrone... Would have put up a way better fight than he did. <laughs> I think for those who watched it and care about it, uh, I think the shoulder punches 
really freaked him out because I hadn't really seen that before, and I don't think Cowboy had either. He's it stunned him, and and and, and I think he it, I think it threw him off balance, and then the follow up kick stunned him. Oh, that follow up kick was nasty. Yeah. I'm nodding like I know what you're talking about. I did not. I was in Vegas. I did not watch the fight. He had much better. Things I was there. there. I could have gone. You could have gone to the fight, but yeah. How much was that? It was 40 situation? seconds, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, the big thing is, I'm actually not an MMA guy, but I will always watch when McGregor fights for two reasons. A, he's a great fighter. Um, I'm a boxing guy. I'm always going to call boxing the more important of the fighting uh, sports. But MMA, McGregor is a Absolute blast to watch, and you never know what's going to happen before, during, after, after. the next day. McGregor is must see TV. He is must see TV, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah. So, and my nephew bootlegged it for me, so that's fine. Good. All forty seconds. I used All forty to, seconds. <laughs> I used to fight MMA in college. You know that? Did you really? Yeah, about fifty pounds ago. <laughs> I was two and two, amateur MMA. I like it. I was also a Marine, so I was, I was the more you know. Yeah. See, I knew that, yeah. but I didn't know you also did MMA. Yeah. Like I said, the more you know. Um, so how, I know you started talking about Toppling Goliath and the uh, Twisted Galaxy. Yeah, we I got think off the, track. I saw this, and the re- if you if you watched a couple of the other uh, times we've gone live, you know we like Galaxy Hops. Yeah, we do. And one of the best <laughs> fucking hops that, that's out there. And anything I see that says Galaxy, I'm going to buy it. So I'm hoping. Um, this really does it justice. Does it have Galaxy Hops in it? Yes, sir. All right, so last beer we tried that had Galaxy Hops in it, you wouldn't have known it. Um, I don't remember what beer it was off the top of my head. It was a 450. That's right. Um, and most of the 450s we'd had have been really good, and that one was, I mean, it was a decent beer. It's just when you're Galaxy Hop nerds like we are, um... (laughs) <laughs> we really it want more. Uh, one of the things they did put on this, though, is it's a live beer. Please keep refrigerated. Yeah. Um, so, again, like we said, it's one of those beers where you need to keep it cold. Yeah. Um, otherwise, all sorts of fun things can happen. I think this is going to be my first from Toppling Goliath. Really? really? You've never had Sudo or King Su? I have not. Both are I amazing. Not. I think I prefer Sudo. King Su. See, Sudo's uh, mine. Uh, Rissa <laughs> isn't on. She's, she's Rissa's a, a big, she's a Sudo Su fan. Absolutely. It's the first episode she hadn't popped in on. Ah, it smells delicious. It does. Ooh. That's tasty. Definitely, it's a hazy beer with definitely some sediment floating around in it. Um, but that's one thing you can expect, especially if a beer can literally tells you, hey, keep it refrigerated. <laughs> uh, you're going to have sediment. Um, like I said, last episode where we had a friend of ours who had sediment in her beer and like kind of freaked out, was calling me, asking me if it was okay to drink. Um, 95% of the time, yes, it's okay to drink. If it's like a 10-year-old beer that's not supposed Maybe to be not. aged. It's, if it's a 10-year-old beer that's not supposed to be aged, you know, you don't really know. But stuff like this, you can absolutely expect. So, for our fans of Mouthville... <laughs> um, Mark to- Burke. Mark. Hey, Mark. <laughs> Top and Goliath gives you some of the softest mouthfeels that are out there. Oh, absolutely. And every beer I've had, it's just super soft. I, just, I don't know if it's the water chemistry they've nailed. I don't know what it is, but um, just amazing. Almost pillowy. Uh, very hoppy without a any burn at all. So we've talked about hop burn a lot because John and I both hate it. Uh, hops for the sake Not of hops. Pleasant. Hops for the sake of hops that causes that back of the throat <laughs> acid Acidic. burn. Mm. It's, it's, I love it. It's not, it's not pleasant, um, but it's definitely, it's hoppy flavor. You got that taste, um, but you're not getting the burn. You're not even getting an over bitter. No. Toppling loves their hazy kind of style, a little bit of that easy mouthfeel um, flavor without the kill. Um, I like it a lot. What about you, Tom? Yeah, I don't know if I have any notes to add on top of what you all said, but it's, it's a solid beer. Uh, would recommend perfect five out of seven. Five out, of, five out of seven. Who the hell does out of seven? Are you not on Reddit? It's just, it's, just Reddit. it's just Reddit thing. Do I look like a guy that gets on Reddit? Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, we still have a few minutes, so what I'm going to do is something we haven't actually done in a couple episodes. Favorite beer of the night. Tom will start with you. I'm putting yes, you on the spot. Yes, yes. I'm putting the guest yes, on the spot. let's go. I, uh, I think I'd have to go with the Prairie Artisan beer, which was the... Remind me of the name. It was, it was complex. It is Bible Belt, even more. 
Bible Belt even more. Not that complex, but I forgot it. <laughs> I, th- I think that would have to be my uh, my favorite of the night. Okay, Jonathan. You know, um, I I like my style. It's my imperial style. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the uh, prairie. All uh, the yeah. Oh. Bible Belt even more. As anybody that's watched before, so AKA I think pretty much Beer Life Helen, uh, <laughs> um, I normally would agree with John and Tom. I always stick to our heavy stouts. I'm a multi guy by heart. Uh, but honestly, Toppling Goliath, uh, this beer, and it's not just because it's what I'm drinking now. Um, usually the one I'm drinking now is the one I don't go with specifically because people think that. It is fantastic. It's, really um, good. Yeah. it's an yeah. easy drink. And it honestly, and I know if Rissa watches this later, she'll be mad. It's going to beat Pseudo Sue, which was my first, top, number one Toppling Goliath beer. Um, it passes Pseudo. Uh, I think it's a better flavor. Um, Pseudo is a great hazy IPA, but this beer I think has more flavor. It is a more complex mouthfeel uh, pr- flavor profile. You got that very much. You got that easy mouthfeel yeah. with a very complex flavor. Uh, Pseudo is very much like here's what we used. This is it mixes it up a little bit, and I like it a lot. Um, where is it, it's delicious. Life? Iowa. Iowa? Yeah, Toppling yeah. Goliath. Okay. They're convenient they're enough regional. to put a yeah. map on their can Ew. with where it's at in Iowa, too. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yeah, they, they want to make sure you know where they're at. Easy um, road trip. Yeah. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, glassware, in case you missed it at the beginning of the day, we switched it up. I'm drinking out of our my uh, out of John's Boulevard. 50 Cent Goodwill Special. Which is Absolutely. amazing. And as you guys, uh, as like one of you know... Um, our very first beer for this show was the 30th anniversary Boulevard Boulevard beer, so that's pretty cool. Tom, I've got the Irvington Brewfest pint glass from the Irvington Brewfest here in the Indianapolis area. Yeah, yeah. so that was from this year. Oh, I, it was this I, year, I wound up having to work that one. So, oh, yeah. you did have nice. I did have to go work that I one. I forgot about that. And then the uh, stuck in the middle, stuck in the middle glass. Um, just a, just another event uh, free pint glass that I got uh, with also the drink Indiana logos, the Indiana Beer Brigade logos, and the Sun King logos. So I was getting ready to say, what was one of the main breweries there? You know, Sun King. Yeah, I wonder why you drink all that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is Sun King a big uh, brewery around here? <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, we do have two minutes left, so I got to ask you. Sure. Favorite brewery in the state of Indiana. Oh, no. God, favorite in the state like and that. favorite in the city. Oh, that is... Oh. Uh, now, if it's the same one, that works. So, favorite... Oh, man. This is tough. fun. This is fun. Favorite I in like the city. I like Right? <laughs> Honestly, like, if I'm going into the brewery itself, it's probably Sun King. I like a lot of their okay. varieties, a lot of the King's Reserve stuff they have on. King's um, Reserve is good. King's Reserve, yeah. that's small the, batch, that's the that barrel stuff. age yeah. program. King's Reserve is barrel age program. But as far as, like, stuff that's being... Distributed. I. <laughs> He's trying to get out of it. Right. Trying to get out of it. I don't know. Second course light. Got him. I, I I don't I don't even know who I could tell you. Uh, real quick, I'll give you mine while he's thinking. Yeah. Uh, just in case you've missed other episodes, uh, in the state it's gonna be Swanzig's down in Columbus, Indiana, and very close second for state, but definitely for the city area, Scarlet Lane out of McCordsville. Those are my yeah. two very favorite breweries. And actually, both of those are two of my favorite breweries I've ever had or been to. I'm going to cheat just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm going I'm to talk about the, um, the probably my favorite breweries I have not been to. So I need to get over to Deviant Brewing. And then I'm heading down to Cedar Creek uh, Brewing this Saturday. If there's anything down there that um, you guys would recommend, let me know. I'll be there. See if I can pick it up. Do you have an answer for the last part or are you going to skip out? You're good if you uh, need to. So I, I'm thinking, like, favorite distributed, probably Three Floyds. I'll That's go fair. basic. All right. But right now... Largest brewery in the state. This, this isn't my favorite in the city, but, like, Noblesville area. Does that count? As yeah, I'll give sure, it to you. Sure, Primeval Brewing. They ah, just opened we're up. just there. We, we, we they are a, a, Not perfect, but they've got a lot of really good beers. I like their vibe. The people who, who run the place are just really nice guys, so... They're, they're and they're right taking now. they're taking a different approach. Instead of chasing the like the the dessert stouts or whether chasing like the super fruity IPAs or whatever, they're going European style. Yeah, and they, they do it pretty well. They're uh, rock my world. You guys try that? The smoky. Oh, that's what you had. 
That's good. It's, um, it's hard to drink a pint. Of, I did not good. give it a great review. Um, I love. It's because you got a. I love Primeval it. Brewing. Uh, it was a lot of fun there. Uh, the beer's good. Not above average, but good. Um, but it, the Rock My World, it's it's a rock beer. It's very smoky. And I'm not, I like smoke, but it was a little too much. It was like drinking liquid smoke. You get the half pint of it? No, I did the full pint. Okay. 